Um, a quick word on laughter yoga. A few years ago, um, I took a trip to the underworld. Oh, back. We <laughs> Sorry, Steve. And while I was there, I got a little bit stuck, but fortunately, I found someone who taught me a PhD in laughter yoga. And I got so good at laughter yoga that I managed to make it back to Earth, so. <laughs> so I'm gonna deliver a beautiful message about it tonight, so, Steve. Laughter yoga sounds a little bit terrifying when we first hear about it. Have any of you heard of it before? A couple of people. It's not really yoga and it's not really laughter, but it fits together quite well. And by the end of this evening, we're going to raise the roof with all the noise we're making. So, how did I figure it out? I learned it by accident, um, not in the underworld. Uh, I was having a stare down with one of my friends and I said to him, you know, I'm going to try and make you laugh while we're having this stare off. So we looked into each other's eyes very deeply. I started laughing, and pretty soon, we looked like this. <laughs> like a couple of cheeky chimpanzees. And what we found was we were laughing so hard that we felt that our brains had almost been switched off and that we'd gone back to an animal-like state. And that's something that is seldom experienced, I think, in this life because we have so many obligations, whether it's work or trying to keep up our social lives, our hobbies and side interests, and just trying to be a decent human being all at the same time, it can be very overwhelming to just manage to stay on top of things and to get out of our heads every now and then. And like, as a show of hands, who here has ever used the words, I don't have time for that? <laughs> yeah, me too. And it's tricky because we want to make time for things that matter to us in our life and to enjoy it and have a good time I'm not doing too much harm. But sometimes we just feel a little bit trapped, like this kid in a cat cage here. <laughs> he got stuck in there, and it's tricky because when we're kids and we have a tantrum, we will get rid of all that tension in our body by um, shaking our bodies and moving a lot and making a lot of noise. But that gets a little bit unacceptable when we're older and we'll get looks like this if we do something that's um, where we're making too much noise or stepping out of line a little bit too much, making too much of a racket. And this is troubling because we're all human beings and we experience emotions and sometimes they're very strong. And we feel like sometimes we're a little bit limited in expressing them, so that when we actually end up breaking free of those reins, it's euphoric, it's wonderful, and it's amazing. And through accidentally discovering laughter yoga, I found that there was a man who'd actually made it a practice. And he is Dr. Madan Kataria, and a man who looks like you could trust with your life. He doesn't look like a man you could trust in their life. Um, but he was studying laughter um, for most of his formal career, and in the early 1990s, he formulated a practice called laughter yoga in his hometown in India, and he got all the people in his town like, to gather with him and start practicing laughter yoga, which is basically standing around in groups and making a lot of noise and having some, having some good laughs. And while it started in India, it has since spread into kind of a global phenomenon. And while not a lot of us have heard of it, it is something that is practiced by tens of thousands of people across the globe in many different continents. And it's kind of weird to think about that something as simple as laughter as a form of relaxation could take on a practice like this, and it has four main steps to it in his practice. Step one is clapping and chanting. Step two is deep breathing. And step three is kind of moving your body and preparing to laugh, shaking it out a bit. And the fourth step is forcibly laughing to the point where it gets so uncomfortable being in a group of people staring each other down that you naturally start to laugh. And one of his techniques is called milkshake laughter, which is something we're gonna practice now, and it's a little bit weird, so 
like, be okay with it being weird. It's a little bit strange. But basically, you pretend you're holding a milkshake, and you pour it from one hand to the other, and then you drink it. So you make a noise, too. You go, eh, eh. Oh! <laughs> Do that with me now. Eh, eh. Oh! <laughs> Don't we feel, doesn't that feel good? I mean, we look like absolute idiots, but it's a great time. And it releases a lot of dopamine and endorphins in the body, so we kind of feel like this. We feel wonderful after doing it. That's probably not something you'd want to do in a place outside of a space like this, so probably get some looks, maybe get locked up in a prison for a night or two. But uh, it can be a really great way to relieve a lot of tension in the body and stress that's going on. And one of the reasons it's so effective is that Laughter is often a response to emotion, and emotions are very contagious, like a bacteria. And we're actually going to have Ryan come out here with me, and we're going to do a quick level demonstration, and then after that, all of you... Where is that little guy? There he is. Um, and afterwards, we're all going to join in, and we're going to make a lot of noise while we're laughing. So if all of us could stand up, please. And the keys to making this work is... For, make, for it to be a little bit more intimate, so I'm going to demonstrate with Ryan here. So what we want to do is stand from across from one another in groups of two or three, and we want to look very deeply into the person's eyes. We want to start breathing. A little bit heavier. A little bit stronger. And then we're going to start laughing while we're looking at people. Let's go. <laughs> One more laugh, Ryan. <laughs> laugh for the people. <laughs> Thank you. You're so wonderful. Have a great night. Samuel Buenrostro, everyone.